Paradise Regained, Book 4. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Anna Roberts. Paradise Regained by John Milton, Book 4. Perplexed and troubled at his bad success, the tempter stood, nor had what to reply, discovered in his fraud, thrown from his hope so oft, and the persuasive rhetoric that sleeked his tongue, and won so much on Eve, so little here, nay lost. But Eve was Eve, this far his overmatch, who, self-deceived and rash, beforehand, had no better weighed the strength that he was to cope with, or his own. But, as a man who had been matchless held in cunning, overreached where least he ought, to salve his credit, and for very spite, still will be tempting to him who foils him still, and never cease, though to his shame the more. Or as a swarm of flies in vintage time, about the wine-press where sweet must is poured, beat off, returns as oft with humming sound, or surging waves against a solid rock, though all to shivers dashed, the assault renew, vain battery, and in froth or bubbles end, so Satan, whom repulse upon repulse met ever, and to shameful silence brought, yet gives not o'er, though desperate of success, and his vain importunity pursues. He brought our Saviour to the western side of that high mountain, whence he might behold another plain, long, but in breadth not wide, washed by the southern sea, and on the north, to equal length backed with a ridge of hills, that screen the fruits of the earth, and seats of men, from cold septentrian blasts, thence in the midst divided by a river, off whose banks on each side an imperial city stood, with towers and temples proudly elevate, on seven small hills, with palaces adorned, porches and theatres, baths, aqueducts, statues and trophies, and triumphal arcs, gardens and groves, presented to his eyes above the height of mountains interposed, by what strange parallax or optic skill of vision, multiplied through air or glass of telescope, were curious to inquire. And now the tempter thus his silence broke. The city which thou seest, no other deem than great and glorious Rome, queen of the earth so far renowned, and with the spoils enriched of nations. There the capital thou seest, above the rest lifting his stately head on the Tarpeian rock, her citadel impregnable, and there Mount Palatine, the imperial palace, compass huge, and high the structure, skill of noblest architects, with gilded battlements, conspicuous far, turrets and terraces and glittering spires. Many a fair edifice besides, more like houses of gods, so well I have disposed my airy microscope, thou mayest behold, outside and inside both, pillars and roofs carved work, the hand of famed artificers, in cedar, marble, ivory, or gold. Thence to the gates cast round thine eye, and see what conflux issuing forth or entering in, praetors, proconsuls to their provinces hasting, or on return in robes of state, lictors and rods, the ensigns of their power, legions and cohorts, terms of horse and wings, or embassies from regions far remote, in various habits, on the Appian road, or on the Emilian, some from farthest south, Syene, and where the shadow both way falls, Mero, Nilotic Isle, and, more to west, the realm of Bacchus to the Black Moor Sea from the Asian kings, and Parthian among these, from India and the golden Cherseness, and utmost Indian isle Taprobane, dusk faces with white silken turbans wreathed, from Gallia, Gades, and the British west, Germans and Scythians, and Sarmatians north beyond Danubius to the Tauric pool. All nations now to Rome obedience pay, to Rome's great emperor, whose wide domain, in ample territory, wealth, and power, civility of manners, arts, and arms, and long renown, thou justly mayst prefer before the Parthian. These two thrones except, the rest are barbarous, and scarce worth the sight, shared among petty kings too far removed. These having shewn thee, I have shewn thee all, the kingdoms of the world, and all their glory. This emperor hath no son, and now is old, old and lascivious, and from Rome retired to Capre, an island small but strong on the companion shore, with purpose there his horrid lusts in private to enjoy, committing to a wicked favourite all public cares, and yet of him suspicious, hated of all, and hating, with what ease, endued with regal virtues as thou art, appearing, and beginning noble deeds, mightest thou expel this monster from his throne, now made a sty, 
and, in his place ascending, a victor people free from servile yoke. And with my help thou mayest. To me the power is given, and by that right I give it thee. Aim, therefore, at no less than all the world. Aim at the highest. Without the highest attained, will be for thee no sitting, or not long, on David's throne, be prophesied what will. To whom the Son of God, unmoved, replied, Nor doth this grandeur and majesty shew of luxury, though called magnificence, more than of arms before, allure mine eye, much less my mind, though thou shouldst add to tell their sumptuous gluttonies, and gorgeous feasts on citron tables, or Atlantic stone. For I have also heard, perhaps have read, their wines of Sedia, Kales, and Falern, Chios, and Crete, and how they quaff in gold, crystal, and murine cups, embossed with gems and studs of pearl, to me shouldst tell, who thirst and hunger still. Then embassies thou show'st from far and nigh. What honour that but tedious waste of time to sit and hear so many hollow compliments and lies, outlandish flatteries? Then proceedest to talk of the emperor, how easily subdued, how gloriously. I shall, thou sayest, expel a brutish monster. What if I withal expel a devil who first made him such? Let his tormentor, conscience, find him out. For I was not sent, nor yet to free that people, victor once, now vile and base, deservedly made vassal, who, once just, frugal, and mild, and temperate, conquered well, but govern ill the nations under yoke, peeling their provinces, exhausted all by lust and rapine, first ambitious groan of triumph, that insulting vanity, then cruel, by their sports to blood inured, of fighting beasts, and men to beasts exposed, luxurious by their wealth, and greedier still, and from the daily scene effeminate. What wise and valiant man would seek to free these, thus degenerate, by themselves enslaved, or could of inward slaves make outward free? Know, therefore, when my season comes to sit on David's throne, it shall be like a tree spreading and overshadowing all the earth, or as a stone that shall to pieces dash all monarchies besides throughout the world, and of my kingdom there shall be no end." means there shall be to this but what the means is not for thee to know nor me to tell to whom the tempter impudent replied i see all offers made by me how slight thou valuest because offered and rejectest nothing will please the difficult and nice or nothing more than still to contradict on the other side know also thou that i on what i offer set as high esteem nor what i part with mean to give for naught all these, which in a moment thou beholdest, the kingdoms of the world, to thee I give, for given to me, I give to whom I please, no trifle. Yet with this reserve, not else, on this condition, if thou wilt fall down and worship me as thy superior Lord, easily done, and hold them all of me, for what can less so great a gift deserve? Whom thus our Saviour answered with disdain, I never liked thy talk, thy offers less, now both abhor, since thou hast dared to utter the abominable terms, impious condition. But I endure the time till which expired thou hast permission on me. It is written, the first of all commandments, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shalt serve. And darest thou to the Son of God propound to worship thee, accursed, now more accursed for this attempt, bolder than that on Eve, and more blasphemous, which expect to rue, the kingdoms of the world to thee were given, permitted, rather, and by thee usurped. Other donation none thou canst produce. If given, by whom, but by the King of kings, God over all supreme? If given to thee, by thee how fairly is the giver now repaid? But gratitude in thee is lost long since. Wert thou so void of fear or shame as offer them to me, the Son of God, to me my own, on such abhorred pact, that I fall down and worship thee as God? Get thee behind me, plain thou now appearest to that evil one, Satan forever damned. To whom the fiend, with fear abashed, replied, Be not so sore offended, son of God, though sons of God both angels are and men, if I, to try whether in higher sort than these thou bearest that title, have proposed, what both from men and angels I receive, tetrarchs of fire, air, flood, and on the earth, nations besides from all the quartered winds god of this world invoked and world beneath who then thou art whose coming is foretold to me most fatal me it most concerns 
The trial hath in damage thee no way, Rather more honour left and more esteem, Me not advantaged, missing what I aimed. Therefore let pass, as they are transitory, The kingdoms of this world, I shall no more advise thee, Gain them as thou canst, or not. And thou thyself seemest otherwise inclined Than to a worldly crown, Addicted more to contemplation and profound dispute, As by that early action may be gained. When, slipping from thy mother's eye, Thou wentest alone into the temple, There wast found among the gravest rabbis, Disputant on points and questions fitting Moses' chair, Teaching not taught. The childhood shows the man, as morning shows the day. Be famous, then, by wisdom. As thy empire must extend, So let extend thy mind o'er all the world in knowledge, All things in it comprehend. All knowledge is not couched in Moses' law, the Pentateuch, or what the prophets wrote, the Gentiles also know, and write, and teach to admiration, led by nature's light, and with the Gentiles much thou must converse, ruling them by persuasion as thou meanest. Without their learning, how wilt thou with them, or they with thee, hold conversation meet? How wilt thou reason with them, how refute their idolisms, traditions, paradoxes? Error by his own arms is best evinced. Look once more, ere we leave this specular mount, westward, much nearer by south-west. Behold, where on the Aegean shore a city stands, built nobly, pure the air, and light the soil. Athens, the eye of Greece, mother of arts and eloquence, native to famous wits, or hospitable in her sweet recess, city or suburban, studious walks and shades. See there the olive grove of Academe. Plato's retirement, where the attic bird trills her thick warbled notes the summer long. There, flowery hill, Hymettus, with the sound of bees' industrious murmur, oft invites to studious musing. There, Elysus rouses his whispering stream. Within the walls, then, view the schools of ancient sages, his who bred great Alexander to subdue the world, Lyceum there, and painted Stoa next. There thou shalt hear and learn the secret power of harmony, in tones and numbers hit by voice or hand, and various measured verse, Aeolian charms, and Dorian lyric odes, and his who gave them breath, but higher sung, blind Melisigenes, thence Homer called, whose poem Phoebus challenged for his own. Thence what the lofty grave tragedians taught, in chorus or iambic, teachers best of moral prudence, with delight received in brief sententious precepts, while they treat of fate and chance and change in human life, high actions and high passions best describing. Thence to the famous orators repair, those ancient whose resistless eloquence wielded at will that fierce democracy, shook the arsenal and full mind over Greece to Macedon and Artaxerxes' throne. To sage philosophy next lend thine ear, from heaven descended to the low-roofed house of Socrates, see there his tenement, whom, well inspired, the oracle pronounced wisest of men, from whose mouth issued forth mellifluous streams, that watered all the schools of academics, old and new, with those surnamed peripatetics, and the sect Epicurean, and the Stoic severe. These here revolve, or, as thou likest, at home, till time mature thee to a kingdom's weight. These rules will render thee a king complete within thyself, much more with empire joined." to whom our Saviour sagely thus replied, Think not but that I know these things, or think I know them not, therefore am I short of knowing what I ought. He who receives light from above, from the fountain of light, no other doctrine needs, though granted true, but these are false, or little else but dreams, conjectures, fancies, built on nothing firm. The first and wisest of them all professed to know this only, that he nothing knew, the next to fabling fell and smooth conceits, a third sort doubted all things, though plain sense. Others in virtue placed felicity, but virtue joined with riches and long life. In corporal pleasure he, and careless ease. The stoic last, in philosophic pride, by him called virtue, and his virtuous man, wise, perfect in himself, and all-possessing, equal to God, oft shames not to prefer, as fearing God nor man, contemning all wealth, pleasure, pain or torment, death and life, which, when he lists, he leaves, or boasts he can. For all his tedious talk is but vain boast, or subtle shifts conviction to evade. Alas! what can they teach and not mislead, ignorant of themselves, of God much more, 
and how the world began and how men fell degraded by himself on grace depending much of the soul they talk but all awry and in themselves seek virtue and to themselves all glory arrogate to god give none rather accuse him under usual names fortune and fate as one regardless quite of moral things who therefore seeks in these true wisdom finds her not or by delusion far worse her false resemblance only meets an empty cloud however many books wise men have said are wearisome who reads incessantly and to his reading brings not a spirit and judgment equal or superior and what he brings what needs he elsewhere seek uncertain and unsettled still remains deep versed in books and shallow in himself crude or intoxicate collecting toys and trifles for choice matters worth a sponge as children gathering pebbles on the shore or if i would delight my private hours with music or with poem where so soon as in our native language can i find that solace all our law and story strewed with hymns our psalms with artful terms inscribed our hebrew songs and harps in babylon that please so well our victor's ear declare that rather greece from us these arts derived ill imitated while they loudest sing the vices of their deities and their own in fable hymn or song so personating their gods ridiculous and themselves past shame remove their swelling epithets thick laid as varnish on a harlot's cheek the rest thin sown with aught of profit or delight will far be found unworthy to compare with zion's songs to all true tastes excelling where god is praised aright and godlike men the holiest of holies and his saints such are from god inspired not such from thee unless where moral virtue is expressed by light of nature not in all quite lost their orators thou then extollest as those the top of eloquence statists indeed and lovers of their country as may seem but herein to our prophets far beneath as men divinely taught and better teaching the solid rules of civil government in their majestic unaffected style than all the oratory of greece and rome in them is plainest taught and easiest learnt what makes a nation happy and keeps it so what ruins kingdoms and lays cities flat these only with our law best form a king so spake the son of god but satan now quite at a loss for all his darts were spent thus to our saviour with stern brow replied since neither wealth nor honour arms nor arts kingdom nor empire pleases thee nor aught by me proposed in life contemplative or active tended on by glory or fame what dost thou in this world the wilderness for thee is fittest place i found thee there and thither will return thee yet remember what i foretell thee soon thou shalt have cause to wish thou never hadst rejected thus nicely or cautiously my offered aid which would have set thee in short time with ease on david's throne or throne of all the world now at full age fullness of time thy season when prophecies of thee are best fulfilled now contrary if i read aught in heaven or heaven write aught of fate by what the stars voluminous or single characters in their conjunction met give me to spell sorrows and labours opposition hate attends thee scorns reproaches injuries violence and stripes and lastly cruel death a kingdom they portend thee but what kingdom real or allegoric i cannot discern nor when eternal sure as without end without beginning for no date prefixed directs me in the starry rubric set so saying he took for still he knew his power not yet expired and to the wilderness brought back the son of god and left him there feigning to disappear darkness now rose as daylight sunk and brought in luring night her shadowy offspring unsubstantial both privation mere of light and absent day our saviour meek and with untroubled mind after his airy jaunt though hurried sore hungry and cold betook him to his rest wherever under some concourse of shades whose branching arms thick intertwined might shield from dews and damps of night his sheltered head but sheltered slept in vain for at his head the tempter watched and soon with ugly dreams disturbed his sleep and either tropic now gan thunder and both ends of heaven the clouds from many a horrid rift abortive poured fierce rain with lightning mixed water with fire in ruin reconciled nor slept the winds within their stony caves but rushed abroad from the four hinges of the world and fell on the vexed wilderness whose tallest pines though rooted deep as high 
and sturdiest oaks bowed their stiff necks loaden with stormy blasts or torn up sheer ill wast thou shrouded then o patient son of god yet only stoodst unshaken nor yet stayed the terror there infernal ghosts and hellish furies round environed thee some howled some yelled some shrieked some bent at thee their fiery darts while thou saddest unappalled in calm and sinless peace thus passed the night so foul till morning fair came forth with pilgrim steps in amice gray who with her radiant finger stilled the roar of thunder chased the clouds and laid the winds and greasly spectres which the fiend had raised to tempt the son of god with terrors dire and now the sun with more effectual beams had cheered the face of the earth and dried the wet from drooping plant or dropping tree the birds who all things now behold more fresh and green after a night of storm so ruinous cleared up their choicest notes in bush and in spray to gratulate the sweet return of morn nor yet amidst this joy and brightest morn was absent after all his mischief done the prince of darkness glad would also seem of this fair change and to our saviour came yet with no new device they all were spent rather by this his last affront resolved desperate of better course to vent his rage and mad despite to be so oft repelled him walking on a sunny hill he found backed on the north and west by a thick wood and out of the wood he starts in wonted shape and in a careless mood thus to him said fair morning yet betides thee son of god after a dismal night i heard the rack as earth and sky would mingle but myself was distant and these flaws though mortals fear them as dangerous to the pillared frame of heaven or to the earth's dark basis underneath are to the main as inconsiderable and harmless if not wholesome as a sneeze to man's less universe and soon are gone yet as being oft times noxious where they light on man beast plant wasteful and turbulent like turbulencies in the affairs of men over whose heads they roar and seem to point they oft foresignify and threaten ill this tempest at this desert most was bent of men at thee for only thou here dwellest did i not tell thee if thou didst reject the perfect season offered with my aid to win thy destined seat but wilt prolong all to the push of fate pursue thy way of gaining david's throne no man knows when for both the when and the how is nowhere told thou shalt be what thou art ordained no doubt for angels have proclaimed it but concealing the time and means each act is rightliest done not when it must but when it may be best if thou observe not this be sure to find what i foretold thee many a hard assay of dangers and adversities and pains ere thou of israel's sceptre get fast hold whereof this ominous night that closed thee round so many terrors voices prodigies may warn thee as a sure foregoing sign so talked he while the son of god went on and stayed not but in brief him answered thus me worse than wet thou findest not other harm those tears which thou speakest of did me none i never feared they could though noising loud and threatening nigh what they can do as signs betokening or ill-boding i contemn as false portents not sent from god but thee who knowing i shall reign past thy preventing obtrudest thy offered aid that i accepting at least might seem to hold all power of thee ambitious spirit and wouldst be thought my god and stormest refused thinking to terrify me to thy will desist thou art discerned and toilest in vain nor me in vain molest to whom the fiend now swollen with rage replied then hear o son of david virgin born for son of god to me is yet in doubt of the messiah i have heard foretold by all the prophets of thy birth at length announced by gabriel with the first i knew and of the angelic song in bethlehem field on thy birth night that sung thee saviour born from that time seldom have i ceased to eye thy infancy thy childhood and thy youth thy manhood last though yet in private bred till at the ford of jordan whither all flocked to see the baptist i among the rest though not to be baptized by voice from heaven heard thee pronounce the son of god beloved thenceforth i thought thee worth my nearer view and narrower scrutiny that i might learn in what degree or meaning thou art called the son of god which bears no single sense the son of god i also am or was and if i was i am relation stands all men are sons of god 
yet thee I thought in some respect far higher so declared. Therefore I watched thy footsteps from that hour, and followed thee still on to this waste wild, where, by all best conjectures, I collect thou art to be my fatal enemy. Good reason, then, if I beforehand seek to understand my adversary, who and what he is, his wisdom, power, intent, by parley or composition, truce or league, to win him, or win from him what I can and opportunity I here have had to try thee, sift thee, and confess have found thee proof against all temptation, as a rock of adamant, and as a centre, firm to the utmost of mere man both wise and good, not more. For honours, riches, kingdoms, glory, have been before condemned, and may again. Therefore, to know what more thou art than man, worth naming the Son of God by voice from heaven, another method I must now begin." So saying, he caught him up, and without wing of hippogriff, bore through the air sublime, over the wilderness and o'er the plain, till underneath them fair Jerusalem the holy city lifted high her towers, and higher yet the glorious temple reared her pile, far off appearing like a mount of alabaster, topped with golden spires. There, on the highest pinnacle, he set the Son of God, and added thus in scorn, There stand, if thou wilt stand, to stand upright will ask thee skill. I to thy father's house have brought thee, and highest placed, highest is best. Now shew thy progeny, if not to stand, cast thyself down. Safely, if son of God, for it is written, he will give command concerning thee to his angels, in their hands they shall uplift thee, lest at any time thou chance to dash thy foot against a stone. To whom thus Jesus? Also it is written, Tempt not the Lord thy God. He said and stood, but Satan, smitten with amazement, fell. As when earth's son, Antaeus, to compare small things with greatest, in Erasa strove with Jove's Alcides, and, oft foiled, still rose, receiving from his mother earth new strength, fresh from his fall, and fiercer grapple joined, throttled at length in the air expired and fell. So, after many a foil, the tempter proud, renewing fresh assaults amidst his pride fell whence he stood to see his victor fall and as that theban monster that proposed her riddle and him who solved it not devoured that once found out and solved for grief and spite cast herself headlong from the ismanian steep so struck with dread and anguish fell the fiend and to his crew that sat consulting brought joyless triumphals of his hoped success ruin and desperation and dismay who durst so proudly tempt the Son of God. So Satan fell, and straight a fiery globe of angels on full sail of wing flew nigh, who on their plumy vans received him soft from his uneasy station, and upbore, as on a floating couch, through the blithe air. Then, in a flowery valley, sat him down on a green bank, and set before him spread a table of celestial food, divine ambrosial fruits fetched from the tree of life, and from the fount of life ambrosial drink, that soon refreshed him wearied, and repaired what hunger, if aught hunger, had impaired, or thirst. And, as he fed, angelic queries sung heavenly anthems of his victory, over temptation and the tempter proud. True image of the Father, whether throned in the bosom of bliss, and light of light conceiving, or remote from heaven, enshrined in fleshly tabernacle and human form, wandering the wilderness, whatever place, habit, or state, or motion, still expressing the Son of God, with godlike force endued against the attempter of thy father's throne, and thief of paradise. Him long of old thou didst debel, and down from heaven cast with all his army. Now thou hast avenged, supplanted Adam, and, by vanquishing temptation, hast regained lost paradise, and frustrated the conquest fraudulent." He never more henceforth will dare set foot in paradise to tempt, his snares are broke. For, though that seed of earthly bliss be failed, a fairer paradise is founded now for Adam and his chosen sons, whom thou, a saviour, art come down to reinstall, where they shall dwell secure, when time shall be, of tempter and temptation without fear. But thou, infernal serpent, shalt not long rule in the clouds. Like an autumnal star, or lightning, thou shalt fall from heaven, trod down under his feet. For proof, ere this thou feelest thy wound, yet not thy last and deadliest wound, by this repulse received, and holdest in hell no triumph. In all her gates Abaddon rues thy bold attempt. 
hereafter learn with awe to dread the Son of God. He, all unarmed, shall chase thee, with the terror of his voice, from thy demoniac holds possession foul, thee and thy legions, yelling they shall fly, and beg to hide them in a herd of swine, lest he command them down into the deep, bound, and to torment sent before their time. Hail, Son of the Most High, heir of both worlds, queller of Satan! On thy glorious work now enter, and begin to save mankind. Thus they, the Son of God, our Saviour meek, sung victor, and, from heavenly feast refreshed, brought on his way with joy. He, unobserved, home to his mother's house, private returned. End of Book Four End of Paradise Regained by John Milton